we can see autism very early in development of the children. And in fact, it is characterized by some challenges with social communications and by very specific and restricted behaviors or interests. So they can be visible in kids as young as 18 months of age. Uh, but many times there is a little bit of a delay in diagnosis, either because uh, parents don't seek out uh, help or they may not know that some of these symptoms are abnormal or because there is difficulties accessing healthcare services to identify a formal diagnosis. So our advice tends to be to listen to the gut feeling of the parents and if there's something that you perceive as being different along the lines of an autism spectrum disorder, especially as it pertains the domains that we covered a little bit earlier, we encourage families to talk to their physicians and see if a referral is indicated and if a formal evaluation is indicated. Autism, as we mentioned earlier, is a developmental condition that is evident very early on since development. And sometimes the symptoms can become more or less significant and lead to more or less challenges. So uh, everyone is going to express themselves in their own unique way. And autism is just a different way of being here in the world. And for many people, that diagnosis accompanies them throughout their lives. But for some, some of those challenges uh, or specific ways of, of being can change over time, which may mean that they don't necessarily continue meeting criteria for autism. So we conceptually think of autism as a lifelong stable con uh, condition, but there are some instances where people, as they get reevaluated over time, may have had changes in their presentation that mean that they don't necessarily meet criteria at a future time point. I think the bottom line is that the goal should not be necessarily whether we we want someone to grow out of that diagnosis or to no longer meet that diagnosis, but just making sure that every person can be the best version of themselves that they can be. And if the diagnosis is a tool that helps them achieve that, that's great. And if it is no longer required, then that's also good. But the site should not be whether that diagnosis is persistent over time, but whether people are getting what they need to thrive. It is very important to think of the, uh, the um, array of potential interventions that can help people on the autism spectrum achieve that best version of themselves. And I know it can be at times confusing for parents, given that there's so much potential treatments or uh, treatments or interventions that attempt or portray uh, an efficacy in reducing some of these symptoms. And I think the number one goal should be to try to make sure that there is a robust evidence base behind any one of these interventions. So we know, uh, for example, that there are many behavioral and environmental and uh, medical interventions that can be put in place that can help with some of those symptoms, knowing that our goal is mostly to, as we said earlier, allow people to be the best version of themselves that they can be, rather than to remove a diagnosis of autism or to cure, and I use this word in, in quote marks because that's, that's not the goal. We just want people to thrive in being the best version of themselves. So going back to this, I don't like to think of interventions as dietary or alternative or conventional, but more in two main categories, the ones that have robust evidence of efficacy behind them and the ones that don't. And my comment would be to try to help parents think of always keeping in mind that we need that robust evidence base to support those interventions, because without that, it, there is a lot of misinformation out there and some but uh, so-called treatments could be offered uh, that may do more harm than good and may be expensive and may be over-promising and under-delivering. So that is the, the gist of how I would think about these potential interventions and therapies. There is plenty that we can do, again, aligned with the idea that we want everyone to be the best version of themselves that they can be. 
And in fact, in psychiatry, we often see people for many other concerns that don't necessarily relate to autism, meaning that people who end up seeing us in the clinic tend to have additional diagnoses like depression or anxiety or attention challenges. And those are the ones that prompt treatment. And those are some of the areas where we can intervene. So I think in a gist, if we conceive autism as a different way of existing in the world, uh, then our target will be to try to make sure that everyone can live to their full potential, potential and free from some of these other challenges like depression or anxiety. And that's what's going to be the main focus of treatment. And this applies equally to children and adults, although there's a lot of research in childhood. Adults on the autism spectrum are unfortunately a population that tends to not be the main area of focus for many of our discussions. And I would encourage people that if there are any needs at any stage in life that can be helped by seeing a mental health professional, that is the right way to go. And there's quite a few things that we can do, not only from a purely symptomatic standpoint, but also to ensure that the support services that anyone needs to uh, live that best version of the, their lives is present in there. So for example, help with identifying housing resources or transitioning uh, between uh, childhood and adulthood. There's a lot of potential challenges that may come up at that time. So making sure that we have wraparound and robust supports for people who need them.